this might not seem all that useful. You can already do many of those same things in Rebel, but um, uh, it can allow you to do some things that you can't do um, in uh, Rebel directly, and that's where this is really useful. Uh, this is just another example. Again, we've got the same format. We're doing Reb Call. We're doing a load, uh, load library. This time we're loading kernel 32.dll, which again is part of Windows. Um, that DLL contains uh, a function called beep. So we're going to create a our own function called play sound, which will run that function inside kernel 32, kernel 32.dll. Uh, it's going to return an integer, and uh, it's going to take several parameters, an integer, and another integer, which we're going to call pitch and duration. And here we're going to uh, run that play sound function that we've created that we've exported from kernel 32.dll uh, in that kernel it's called beep in our code it's called play sound we've given that name to, to that beep function uh, and we're going to go through a little for loop um, uh, we're going to use the variable hertz to to go through the number 0 to 5000 skipping in, in leaps of 10 and now we're going to print the pitch is now that current number Hertz, and then we're going to play sound, gonna play that beep. We're going to make a beep out of that Hertz number uh, for a uh, duration of 50. Run that in Rebel. Again, let's do the editor. Paste it in. Press F5. Save the text. all that, although it would be good to free the library. Okay, so um, all of those standard Windows API functions uh, you can find in, in uh, several nice little programs that show you the format, the parameters, the return, uh, uh, return values that can be sent from all those functions. Uh, a couple links here that let you download some programs that that uh, show you these things in a nice format. Um, these couple uh, examples were created for Visual Basic programming language, but they uh, uh, they can be easily understood. When you look for the you know for the parameters and for the return return values. Uh, you can also download the Windows help files, uh, which covers the Windows API functions. Uh, one of the really useful things about DLLs is uh, a lot of times you can find DLLs that will do things that, that you want. For example, this DLL um, is a spell checking DLL. Um, we'll download it and um, Rebel does not contain any spell check um, functionality. Um, it uh, it doesn't have that built into the language, um, but this DLL does. We've got a uh, dictionary DLL. This is a free DLL that you can download from that website, and it provides spell che checking capabilities. Um, and to use it, what we do we, again, we have to have the patched Reb call um, version of of Rebel, um, and there are several functions in this. Um, that we need to perform a spell check. One is called dictionary load and the other is called dictionary check. Um, and so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to um, run the rev call code. Um, we're going to open that library, dictionary.dll, and we're going to load those two functions. Um, and we create rebel functions. One is going to be called load hyphen dic and then the other rebel function is going to be called check hyphen word and those are both just taken from the library that we've that we've uh, uh, loaded already and the, the internal functions in that library are called dictionary load underscore load and dictionary underscore check and uh, we've created our own functions called load hyphen dic and check hyphen word uh, in the beginning of this code we do uh, 
an ask function to get a word from the user. That's just REPL code. And we're saving that word in the word, uh, or saving that word in the variable check me. Okay, and then we run the load DIC function, which just loads the dictionary from the DLL. Um, and then this actually checks the word. And it, and it passes back, returns a um, an integer um, that we're going to save as response. So we check the word, check me, we run that function, check word, check that word, check me, um, and then uh, dictionary function returns a zero if there are no errors. So um, if we got a zero as a response, there are no spelling errors. And if we didn't get a zero, that means that the word wasn't in the dictionary. If it didn't find it in the dictionary. Um, I'll paste that into rebel. Let's do this in interactive mode again. We'll run the editor. Um, paste it in. And run it with the F5 key. says no spelling errors were found. If we were to run this again, we'll put in a word that likely isn't in the dictionary. And it says that word is not in the dictionary. So that is an example of something that can't be done natively in Rebel, which is very easy to do using a, a third-party DLL. Here's another DLL uh, stored on the same website as the tutorial download and save that and what this DLL does is it um, it plays an mp3 file again something that's not included in rebel rebel can play wave files by default um, but it doesn't have any facility built in to, to play mp3s so what I've done here is I've created a, a small program in um, pure basic and uh, what it does is called play file um, and it just loads the, the mp3 file and gives us a little console saying uh, press any key to stop the playback um, and it waits for a key press and then it closes the console in the end that's the pure basic code you don't have to know how to do that all you have to know is uh, how to access that code in rebel download the dll which is what, which is what we did um, what i've actually done here is at one point, I compressed, using the binary embedder that you saw earlier in the tutorial, I compressed that DLL um, to this binary code, and I saved it here as DLL module. I'm going to load it here. So in this case, I didn't even need to download the DLL. I've got it directly in the code. Um, and it actually... Uh, wrote it to the hard drive and then we're going to do uh, the play file function in that DLL. So we write the write the DLL directly to the hard drive. We're going to call it play mp3.dll. That's all. We're going to write all that compressed code and we load the rev call and we load that module play mp3.dll um, and then we're going to create our own function play mp3 from the play file function that's included in there and that will do everything that was in that uh, in that DLL code. Uh, now we request a file, an MP3 file from the user, and when that's done, we play it using our created MP3 uh, play MP3 function and the file that was selected by the user. We're done. Uh, we print a little message and free the library.